guys, we're going to let you uh, tune in on Facebook here to our end of the day review. And we were doing uh, quite a bit of electrical training today, right? Yep. And out, you know, out in that lab, I mean, we had a lot happen today, right? Yep. So the big thing that we've been working on today and making a big stress point on, and I'm going to share a story here. I'm going to try not to get choked up too because it's about my mom. But I'm trying to get you technicians to understand how important it is to understand terminology and like the terms that are used not only in our field but in other fields. So if you look here, we were kind of just playing around today and where we take uh, ohms and talk about other things that relate to ohms. So you guys, continuity, resistance, grounds, whatnot, volts, things that are to do with that, amperage, and so on. And where that really hit me, and I mean hit me really hard, was a few years ago my mom was still alive. And my mom, if, if many people don't know why I do what I do, it's, it's all in, in memory of my mom because uh, I mean, she just uh, taught me a lot of things uh, about myself that I really uh, try to incorporate in my everyday life. And so my mom gets misdiagnosed with cancer, if many don't know that, and she does uh, this nine months of chemo. She gets to the point of losing all her hair, can't drive, can't do anything else. And they finally tell her she's got maybe a month to live and they send her to Mayo Clinic, which amazing place. I mean, just a, a total godsend, right? So she gets to Mayo, and we're scared out of our minds, right? I mean, you think about this. I mean, it's crazy. So we get up there, and this is how it relates to our story and relates to us, is that this doctor comes out, and my mom is used to me. You guys have been around me, any YouTube fans out there know I'm, <laughs> you know, I ask a lot of questions, I talk a lot, I'm pretty thorough, right? So we get into this meeting and the doctor comes out and I kid you not, you guys are probably too young, probably don't even know who this is, but Doogie Hauser. Anybody know there was a show? There was a show years ago, Google it, Doogie Hauser. He was this young, like super genius person that uh, became a doctor at a real young age. And so I kid you not, this guy comes out and, and I'm Irish, so he comes out and I think he's from Ireland. And he is like a Doogie Hauser, right? So the first thing that happens with me is I'm no different then a lot of people taking their motorcycles to a shop and I'm like, what is this guy gonna know? I mean, he looked like he was 12. But I'm at Mayo and I'm pretty think their hiring credentials are pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna shut my mouth and I'm gonna let him do his job. But this is where we get in trouble. We gotta grow beards and long hair and get a bunch of tattoos so people think we know what we're, what we're doing, right? So, Doogie Hauser, the real one, sits us down. And my mom and I are sitting there and trying to make the best of it. And he says, I need you to stop the chemo. You don't have cancer. Ah, oh, please. Man, I'm so infuriated, right? And my mom's like, what, what? No, I have to do it. It's the only thing. And she's so mind warped that she has to keep doing the chemo to stay alive. Here's where, here's where it gets crazy. This guy goes on and he starts to explain. Let me explain this. And he goes on and he starts to talk about the human body, but he's describing it like a, like a car, like a motorcycle. He says, well, you know, you've got your heart and it pumps here and here's what your liver does. And he looks at me and he says, well, your liver, and he says, your liver is like an oil filter. So your liver is gonna go through and take the stuff out you don't need. And he goes on to, to explain this to my mom and he says, you don't have cancer, you have liver disease and you've unfortunately been misdiagnosed because where you, where you went, is missing a tool, a tool Mayo has that is just the most amazing thing in the world and has this additional tool to take what all these people that might be diagnosed with cancer with this tool, they're going, no, it's not cancer, it's still bad, but it's, it's this disease and this, it's like this really specific diagnostic, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm like this and I'm just glued to this guy. And he continues to talk about the oil filter and this and that or whatnot. And so we get done and he says, okay, and he, there's this real kind soul about him. He says, do you have any questions? And I look at him and I'm like, no. And my mom, and so now, you gotta remember, my mom's just finding out, number one, she doesn't have cancer. Number two, she has a great hope for life, okay? And this guy says, so we probably have years together. And she grabs me and she, she starts elbowing me. My mom does, right? She starts elbowing me and she's like, and I'm like, what? You know? She's like, go just start. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, do you have any questions? You always got a million questions. So she starts this little banner back and forth. She's like, and I'm like, not one. Not one. I have one question. And the guy smiles, right? So I wish I wish you could see this person. I wish I knew his name to give him credit. But he he just sits back and he smiles. And I said, You wait a second. I said, I don't have any questions for you. My mind is blown. And he goes, yeah. I said, how can that be? 
that I don't have any questions for you. Where, where are you from? What's your training or whatnot, you know? And, and he looks at me, he says, well, my country, we do something that is, is pretty cool. We take an entire course where we take medical terminology and we break it into different fields of people's type of business. Like they take and they try to come up with how would an accountant hear this medical explanation? How would a mechanic, and he said and by far in his training, mechanics were the easiest ones to compare the human body to. Because you could take a mechanical piece and compare it to an organ in the body and we can go, oh, that's how that works? That's what the kidney does, the filter, remember that? But he said that they actually studied in their country not only how to learn medicine, but how to communicate medicine. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you YouTube, Facebook, whatnot. I left that room thinking I've got a lot of learning to do where I've talked to numerous different customers and I felt like no matter what I said, I couldn't communicate to them in a way that they could understand. So when I say, get out there and try and learn maybe what the auto industry does or learn what something else calls a part, you know, we call it brain box and we could say it's a computer, it's an ECM, it's this, it's that, whatever. We, we wanna be able to talk in those terms that somebody else can understand. So my, my motivational encouraging story as you guys are training is to learn how to communicate. That, that man really changed my life and how I looked at things and it was absolutely nothing but perfection to walk out of that meeting, not only with the good news, but to just feel really clear about what do we do next. Do you know what I'm saying? Because as a mechanic, whether you're doing this for yourself or you're trying to explain this to the customer, everything that we do is about our next step, isn't it? We gotta think about what is it, okay? If the, if the headlight's not working, you know, what's our choices? Are we fixing the headlight? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? So on. That's my story. I was getting ready to tell these guys, I thought I can't not share this, uh, share this with everybody else out there. So that's our end of the day wrap up, keep wrenching uh, story, make it great. I'm gonna finish up with these guys. Cut, cut. <laughs> oh, I didn't cut it. Oh, no. oh. I think I cut it.